become zero waste, first of all, we need to know what kind of trash we're making. So a lot of time we think about reduce and reduce is the main thing because if you reduce already, then you don't really even need to deal with it in later on, like the part that is uh, like about recycle, you don't even need to deal with that later on. And so reduce is definitely like really helpful. And we, we, we use, redesign is also important too. So redesign your lifestyle, why? Because based on 2021, the most updated data, Today, one third of the plastic waste end up in nature, affecting human health and most species on the planet. And here we are, we have 2% effectively recycled, 12% recycled, 14% incinerates, which, which cause the air, even though it's after future, there's still some of the toxic in the air. Or, you know, it's not 100% that is being filtered. And, and think about who gonna clean that future, right? If that future is not being clean in a, in, in, a, in in certain time, it will accumulate it, and all this stuff inside is still cause cancer, right? Or lung cancer. So think about that. Do we really have a real solution with our trash? The answer is no. Why? Because forty percent it go to landfill. What's that mean? Landfill is just accumulating all the trash in one place in the soil and damaging the soil, damaging the water and damaging the air as time goes by. And 32% end up in the environment. That means that the ocean, the forest, right? Places that you can never imagine, it may have accumulated heavy metal as well. So, so do we, does human being really have a, a way to deal with trash in, even after you look at this trash? The answer is no. So reduce is really urgent, especially for the air we breathe, right? Think about the air we breathe every day, every time, every second. 50% of this oxygen is come from the forest. And the other 50% of the oxygen is come from ocean, right? Inside of the, this ocean is strongly relying on trillion and trillions of uh, plankton, plank plankton, which release the oxygen for all life to breathe. And now, do we know what situation these plant plankton are facing in the ocean? No, we don't know, but they are facing us, they are suffering from microplastic because they're eating this microplastic and they're reading, they're trying so hard to pull out those microplastic out of their body and look at our human behavior. In Victoria's Secret, in, in H&M, those people are cutting fine clothes, burning fine clothes, and, and then they were, they were not donating those clothes. And those behavior in long term that I saw it in Instagram, after they, they write down in, in their, you know, their, their dialogues, right, in, in their chat, um, in the post, under the post, wow. A lot of people are suffering from depression because of they, they work for this company for a long time and they're getting paid to burn, to destroy these fine clothes. Same things like pest marked and, and pest stores, those places, people are, are suffering because they work inside, they also suffer. They are, they are also like, you know, were told to put those animals into refrigerator instead of curing them, healing them, or, or help them to, to get better, right? So it's a lot of depression that accumulated in the society, including all these like factory worker, the subcontractor, right? Working for, for gas, um, to fixing the gas, and also like fixing the railway, fixing the road, why a lot of the time they were told to do things fast and, and, and done it in a way that were told by, by their boss. But is that a way that can really help the, the, the planet? No, it's just end up with a huge amount of trash and they notice. And why this action is not being taken is because we don't know um, how it affects every single life species in this planet but now we know it does affect every single piece of plastic when it goes to the ocean now we have 32 percent 
it go to the ocean that affecting the amount of oxygen that we breathe and when the ocean have less oxygen because the plant plankton are suffering from mycoplastic that means that we have a more flooding more high rates that flooding or more and more higher rates to get extreme weather so if we don't care every lives every lives in this planet is are going to suffer so that's why i have to share this because i think saving life is so meaningful and it's motivating me to share at this moment that's why i'm here to share is to to understand how the trash you made is end up in where and why it is important to understand and also understand where your food come from right and how to really eat healthy and why you should not give up of of eating healthy or choosing genetic modified food right those are the decision that we really wanted to know what is really healthy what is really good for for you for yourself so all this information hopefully it's going to help you to ex expose like how to practice the zero waste lifestyle of course we all going to start with how to understand how many trash you're going to make so let's start from here and the best way to learn is always not from someone telling you to do something the best way to learn is also um let yourself do your own research and find out so that's motivate me to 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 start doing the zero waste lifestyle because the behavior of dumping now i change i change the behavior of dumping to to behavior of fixing and behavior of fixing like fixing relationship fixing um fixing material and fixing the communication skills and learn how to save your friendship how to save your relationships or right? how to save any relationship that you care about so that process of like healing is a process of reaching that zero waste lifestyle as well. Now, uh, a lot of the time when I look at the trash, I find out myself, a lot of the time, like 50% is food. So how can I, you know, deal with those food? Well, if you're living in New York City, you're so lucky because you got a chance to actually that definitely like seeing different places that has a lot of community gardens and these community garden they do compost and if you don't know how to compost there's a compost map you can search it from ecosia and find out because ecosia is a website that that it can help you to plant the plant plant tree around the whole globes and if you're the type of person worry about planting too much tree you can ask them because I'm, I believe that they don't over plant trees um, because like some places it does need more grass than trees. So it's really depending on geography. So it's good to find out by yourself, but each search on Ecosia, it helps to plant trees. So if you don't know where the compost uh, map is, you can search from Ecosia and find out where the compost map um, is is located in New York City. Some of the sizes like next to my home that can that have like 24 hours, seven days a week dump, dump the uh, compost inside. So I, I can just dump all the compost. And because I eat veg vegetable a lot, so, so I don't eat meats. So I don't need to worry about putting the compost, uh, putting the meat in the compost bin. But if you do eat meat, that's okay. And meat is actually uh, very important in the ocean and also for birds, seabirds, because each year, one million seabirds die because of eating, mis mistakenly eating plastic pieces in their stomach. So one million for one year. Why? Because they, when they look at the red plastic or maybe like red balloons, they think that is food. They think that's fresh foods. So they, they don't have a concept of plastic. So they eat them all. And when they eat them all, it's stuck in their stomach. So to save lives is very meaningful. And to save life, you can save all this meat and then cut it into small pieces. And when you go to the ocean, since you're in New York City or New Jersey, that's close to the ocean you can put it into the ocean and allow those seabirds to eat those meat pieces. 
so that they can survive. It's important, you're saving lives. So just noticing that uh, to, to save the meat and, 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 and do it that way instead of putting in trash, which it may mix it with other chemicals. So that's the way to deal with the foods. And there are so many ways to deal with it, really depending on where you live. Some of my friends, they live in raw area. They feed the level food to their sheep, to their pig, to their chicken. And those are definitely doable. Or you can also make cookies, make dumplings, or make eco enzyme so that you can use that to wash your entire house. So there's so many ways to deal with the level of food. It's not just uh, you know, compost is one of the way. It's not just the only way. So understand that you have so much option to do it instead of just putting it into the trash. So that helped me to heal my soul by doing this. I know all these wonderful food level food will turn into beautiful soil, and later on, it's gonna grow foods, right? Why am I doing what am I doing? So I share my, let's, let me share my um, story that motivated me a lot. In 2019, or maybe like uh, before that, 2017, uh, or maybe 18, I forgot. Yeah, I think it's 2018. I went to um, do like a first time hiking, but also like pick up trash with group of 17 people. And we all pick up trash and when I pick up uh, deep down, I realized that I just want to shake away that, you know, that soil. Um, you know, I just want to pick up that candy wraps. But then when I pick up the candy wraps, I already seeing like mycelium fungi grow in between uh, the soil and also like ants, they were still walking on top because it was summer. So a lot of uh, insects were very active. So as I shaked it away, I realized that, wow, nature don't really have a concept of like trash. They really don't. And what do they do is they observed it and accumulated as time goes by. So at that moment, I suddenly link it to my body. I know that if I, I care too much about my pimple and it is useless because um, when I die, the whole entire planet Mother Earth will observe me, will accept me as who I am, as, as what, what I am. And, and it will, you know, it will nurture me and it will, you know, allow myself go back to nature. And that's like that moment, it, it made me wanted to cry because that's such a deep love that Mother Nature is having the connection with, with my body. So that's that, that moment I start to cry and, and start to walk up um, to other people and tell them, please don't throw trash to the mountain. It's such a, an awesome place uh, to have. And so that, that moment I understand is so important to, 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 you know, to connect myself and to have that story motivate myself to, that to reach my zero waste uh, goal because I now I understand nature don't have a concept of trash. Nature, the you know, like trash is a human concept. It's a human belief. It doesn't exist in nature. That's why all the seabird, they were mistakenly eating all these plastic because in their mindset, they never noticed that is trash, that is pl plastic. They never noticed all they think was like food right so human make this concept and if human does make this concept that means that there's a possibility that we can change that concept or or you know let go of that concept and help and and start re relearn from nature so if you have any um stories that you wanted to share at this moment that related to climate change related to um, you know, like zero waste, let me know. Okay, so we, we look at this um, black tissue NAMI. That's a, that's a 45 minutes films, about 50 minutes. So after that, um, they find out there's a lot of heavy metal fine uh, sand that, that accumulated under, 
the bedding of the of the ocean and it's and it bring into really stinky smell and and it's highly toxic uh, after the nuclear waste uh, release so it's really important to understand our human um, action that supporting the nuclear power that, that and also understand is uh, possible possible consequences and how is that that like when the when the group of people they deep they dive deep down to the ocean they don't find any life because uh, yeah because it's highly toxic the area so that's that means like going to zero waste lifestyle you also um not supporting this kind of behavior that means that you will start to use something else instead of uh, supporting the nuclear power plant so now let's take a look at the illusion of reality which means <laughs> in reality the nature don't have a concept of trash but in in illusion of reality which means a human made concept is let's take a look at what the what's the number one trash in 2021? Hong Kong Nature Dare da da Diary. Uh, they find out uh, the number one trash uh, when when they go hiking is cigarette butts, and 99.8 percent of the cigarette butts are made out of cellulose, uh, acetic uh, cellulose. And that means it's microplastic and it's polluting the sewer system and then it go back to the river. And it, it, it's also polluting the drinking river and it's, it's not good at all. And the uh, birds eating it, sea turtle eating it, and, and, and human are eating it. Human one month can possibly eat like up uh, one uh, plastic credit card. So, so that's, that's one of the reason why I wanted to reduce my own impacts because, um, you know, because the concept, I mean, the, the concept of trash is harming every single life being in this planet. So the number one trash that people find out is cigarette butts. And then is the tissues, right? Tissues, a lot of the time we use it in, in bathroom so how did I achieve my two month zero waste goal by not using any tissues for two months? I actually use water and, and, and paper, I mean, water and towel instead, not paper, okay? So it's like in traditional Indian, uh, some places in Japan, uh, they are using water and towel uh, instead of tissues after they uh, finish their number two. Right, or now and day, there are a lot of people start using compost toilet, and not oh. just that, they the the they plant blue spur flower in the south in the south of U.S. They plant blue spur flower, that leaves they use that to 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 replace the tissues. After that, it can go back to compost. Now, if you live in the north, you can use mullen, mullen leaf. I haven't tried yet, okay, but you can experiment. But that's an option, okay? And so you can use that mullen leaf to wipe your butt, and then you can put it into the compost beans. Or you simply just like use compost toilet and water and towel instead. So that's doable. And when I visit Hong Kong, that's how I saw uh, some of the people did it. And also when I visit Taiwan, I have seen those people did it. So, um, you know, yeah, you're right. People may not stop creating cigarette butt trash so they could quit smoking. Right, that's the only way to show it down. Yeah, it's important to quit smoking now. You, you see, there's another reason why we need to quit smoking. People need to quit smoking. It's because it's harming all life beings. And and the effects is a long-term effects because it can get into the plankton's body and the plankton is releasing all this oxygen in the ocean for all life to breathe, including, including human beings. So 
So this is really important to aware all these trash, mm -hmm. where it goes and how does it end up and how does it affect every single life being, including you and me. Every single second we're breathing, we cannot avoid, right? <clears throat> Use those impacts. So that's it. that's why I wanted to share the two, two months zero waste go. And because of that microplastic, I also change all my clothes, all my clothes from from polyester, from uh, syn syn syntax, like all these like uh, yeah, can... polyester that, that release the microplastic, you know, those kind of clothes, I change them all to 100% cotton where I used to buy, or if I have to buy, I choose secondhand. But nowadays, a lot of mm. secondhand are brand new, do you know that? Like not even a person like wear it before, but it becomes secondhand because just people just dumping too fast. And so there are enough clothes in this planet for every single human being with secondhand choice. And, and secondhand choice doesn't mean that you don't get fine cotton or, or, or fine wolf uh, material. So you do get them. And if it is they are in colorful dyes, then that's possible that uh, if they are come from industry, that doesn't care uh, about their products, so it can also be toxic. So be careful, even though it's like, if it is not synthetic clothes, if it's natural material, yeah, sure. but it would come with the colorful dyes, you just be careful that also will lead toxic. And so the next thing is to, to um, when you have to wear those like uh, very, uh, like, uh, you know, like polyester clothes, when you wash it, make sure you change it into cold water machine mold. So that in that case, there's two good benefits. One, it helps to state the colors. Second, it helps to release less microplastic into the ocean. Okay, so now, because last year, the Holland scientists already find out the polyester, I mean, the microplastic already found, be, being found in human blood stream. And last, the year before that, which means is 2020, and it was found in between newborn baby and the mother, the birthing, the birth tubes. And the year before, the microplastic was found in honey, salt, water. So just be aware of all these choices when you're making it and, and not, not having you to feel depressed, but change, it, it becomes so important now uh, at this moment to reduce our own impact in daily life actions. Noticing that lit, even that just that little bit, little bit, uh, you know, uh, achievement is still, uh, is still worth to celebrate because the birth stomach is really small. It's like half of your thumb. So that's how big the birth stomach is. So uh, that means that if you use less plastic or even just like half of your fingernail that counts because that is the size of some of the birth stomach. You save their lives because you reduce the use of that amount of plastic for that day. So don't ever underestimate your impact. So, and, and the third one most, mostly fine when people are going to hiking was the bags, okay? Like plastic bags or reusable bags. Those are the food bags that like uh, were being thrown away. So to replace that, you, you were definitely like trying to bring your own bags, right? Reusable bags. Again, if it is a microplastic, choose to hand wash or maybe cold water mold wash in the machine, right? To reduce that amount of microplastic released in the ocean. And the plastic bag is number four, definitely not, not getting more plastic bag for sure. And the plastic bottles, is uh, number five, definitely like bring your own plastic bottle that can possibly save, you know, the red hammock crabs that you never met, but it's super cute and crazy, amazing, amazing because they, they, they are very sustainable. They, they just follow the dead smell to find a new shell. And that's why they end up in the plastic bottle because there are a lot of dead body that, 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 that hammock crabs, the smell, 
of the dead hemicraft attract the other hemicraft to come in to the thinking of that, oh, they got a new shell, yay. But no, they got a they got into a plastic bottle and their little leg were too small to claw over to the other bodies. And that's how they all trapped in one plastic bottle and died together. So reducing the use of plastic bottles definitely saved lives. And then the next one is tissue, right? I already talked about the tissues. So bring your own napkins. How about we use napkins, just like bring them with you. So that helped me actually because I, I do eat lunch and I bring my own lunch with my own uh, uh, saving heat 24 hour container. So I cook my breakfast in the morning, I put it in, in into my container and then I bring it to my workplace and I have my own napkin, my own spoons and my own container. After I ate it, I, I everything can put it back. So zero weight, zero weight, zero waste. And then by the end of the day, I go back home and washed it. So that helped me to reach my two months zero waste goal. And then like if you live in China, napkin, napkin again. So I don't really need to use the wet napkins. I use a uh, rack. And, and the most important thing is like during the pandemic, I did a 200 Q&A from CDC to find out that actually wet, wet napkin, wet wraps is actually not good compared to soap and water is much more effective it's 80 percent of the of the germ can be cleaned simply by water and soap so i don't even need the wet wet um you know wraps and it's so wasteful a lot of people buying it and dumping it into a sewer system and then accumulate it and it doesn't do any good right and it's make out of microplastic as well and a chemical make it soft. Like what's the, what's the matter, human? It's just so blindful. The whole entire society, former society, that's so blindful and keep using all these products without a second thought, okay? And it's harming our life. All this information must be out. Um, and then the number eight is the, is the aluminum can. So some of the people in, on YouTube, they did like a really great uh, experiments. They put some particularly um, chemical that can react inside of the cans. And then all of a sudden they pull out a piece of thin plastic within the aluminum cans. Then you notice, then, it, then that was the moment I find out if even though you're drinking from aluminum cans, you are actually drinking from plastic, a very thin plastic bag. That's how they took it out and that's how they find out. It makes sense because like it, uh, the aluminum is still metal. It may react with the, you know, um, candy, you know, like it may change the taste, right? So it makes sense. But, but in terms of recycling, in terms of like, you know, uh, saving the planet, is that good? Mm, you, have a, you have a question mark in there. So, um, but how can you be green then? Well, I would bring my own container and go to those places. Like for example, I really like to drink soil meal. And this, I noticed that uh, my bakery store that they have a fresh soil meal to offer. So I bring my own container and ask for them to put the soil meal into my own container. And it works, it works. So try to find out around your neighborhood to see if there's a, possible that you can find those kind of store and, and talk to them, approach them and get your own um, stuff without, without like, you know, without asking for a plastic container or plastic bags. So the next one is the, is the mask, right? The mask. So the mask is very, um, important to noticing is a lot of the mass is make out of microplastic, especially those disposable. So that's why I start to use one that are reusable, right? Even though it's, it is make out of cotton, it still have the 60% of protections for, you, for, you, for, you, for yourself. So uh, that's why I start to use a reusable mask. And, and if I have to, um, you know, um, uh, throw away, this, you know, it's not a way, you know, 
it's gonna be going to somewhere in the, in a turtle stomach. You know, they find out the 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 mass in the turtle turtle's poop, right? So it's really it's not going anywhere, right? It's still around us. It's just not somewhere that we see it. Doesn't mean that it's not exist anymore, right? So uh, when I have to put it away, I have I will cut the two banner so that it doesn't trap the bird's legs. Okay, so I now and then I bring my scissor with me wherever I walk. And if I see that, I'll definitely cut, cut them off and before it's being um, thrown away. And the next thing is, oh, you know what? It's, uh, it's the plastic bottle caps, right? The caps of the plastic bottles, number 10. So to replace that, definitely bring your own plastic, I mean, bring your own bottles and bring your own um, cups when you go out. And if you want to drink or coffee, you know, you can still ask for the stores to put it into your um, container. So this is, um, this is also crops from Spotify. It's uh, based on the one of the person I follow that she got this information from uh, highly reliable information that they accumulated and they calculated in 2021. Spotify has the BTS songs, the Blackpinks, it's become the top song, right? In K-pop, it's become the, one of the top song. But like the, the amount of time that song is being played uh, in Spotify, the whole planet has to plant 760,000 trees to equalize, like to equal the amount of CO2 that's released in the, in the, in the, in the sky. So that bring me attention that even though we are, you know, thinking that we are online at home, we do nothing to harm the planet, but then the CO2 that release is still, still harming the planet. But it seems like no one ever talk about this, right? A lot of people only talk about like airplane, maybe like cars. Well, what about your computer? The amount of CO2 that released from, from all these Wi-Fi connection and, and with the songs that you play many times, right? So what is the solution on that? How can I reduce the, uh, like reach the zero waste goal on in that perspective? So it will be www.ecosia.org. Is each search, they will plant tree um, in this planet to, to reduce the CO2 that, uh, that's released uh, in, the, in, the, in the air. You're right, nobody talk about it because because uh, when you think about like the, the factory that released the electricity and the transportation, like nobody think about like, you know, uh, listening to song, going online, surfing online, Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi that released a lot of CO2. And it's so ironic because like, a lot of people talk about climate change, but they don't recognize it at, by the moment that they are checking it with a huge, like meeting uh like maybe like thousand people 500 people and and choose to use that um life that amount of um co2 that released in the air is actually four to five times higher than compared to after you download it so what does that mean that means that if you buy a cd if you buy a dvd and you play it at home instead of instead of going to youtube and play the song that amount of co2 is four to five times less less compared that to to you playing the song 100 times on youtube just to aware that so the climate change uh, in 2021 uh, based on the UN COP26, climate change is caused by human activities. And we already know all the ways that the, the burning fossil fuel and landfill incineration nature is not the solution. And it's happening every day. But what is the solution? 
the solution is we can start from ourselves to reduce the amount of trash we create. Plastic is made from chemicals and fossil fuel and fossil fuel are extracted from the earth. When you are producing burning oil or gas, you are warming the planet. So using single use plastic packaging is directly linked to climate change. And Judy is actually, she's actually a pre principle of Department of Ed, uh, Environmental Protection. So she's like the former principal of, uh, of the Department of I Environmental Protection. She said this um, during the Microplastic Madness uh, documentary films. And the effect is obvious. Now in the ocean is more than six patch now, six six garbage patch that accumulated in the, to, into the ocean. And usually those area are the area where the shark enhanced their baby, where the turtle enhanced their babies. So you can imagine why the shark is suddenly attack human is because their homeland had turned into trash land. And who producing that trash? Human, right? That's why they don't care if, if, if my home is being uh, you know, attacked by your trash, then why can I attack human, right? I don't know if the shark ever had that thought, but it's obvious that after all this trash uh, patch that accumulated in the, to the ocean, and you're hearing, seeing the news that talk about shark attack human. You think that's coincident? What's happening in nature? Let's take a look at nature, how nature is uh, decomposing all the food that we ate. Even that you throw a piece of food in nature, who's gonna eat it? Ah, you take a look at the left hand side. So worms will eat it most likely, right? Flies, definitely. Well, though, even though they, they you look at them at the way that uh, you make you feel want to say ew, but then you know what happened? The fly, the, it, you can also twist your mind and think that the fly exists there because it was not clean. So if it is happening at your home, that means that you need to have more time to clean up so that they don't eat what you left off. Because nature is so amazing. What you think you were clean, you know, that you, you may think that, oh, I eat it and it was clean. But in, 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 uh, in Kokoracha perspective, there's a food there. <gasps> They only see food there. So that's why they go and eat. It's so natural for them. And after they eat it, don't worry, they will go away. That means that it's the time that it was clean. When I was taking a, a, a train from, from Amsterdam all the way back to New York City, I see, I see the first time I see, I take time to see how fly actually clean the window. So it's, it was because someone put their face or maybe like oily face, oily finger uh, on the window. So it makes it, it make it looks blurry. But then in fly's perspective, that's food there and that's not clean. So I, I, I look at the flies and it stuck its tongues a thousand times. Stuck its tongues a thousand times. Like it, can you imagine who's gonna clean the, the, the window through by your tongue? But flies did it, and we, it was so amazing. I saw its pattern, and they clean up so much uh, one side of the window, and I'm amazed because they are here. They have their mission in this planet is they are being a decomposer. They are being a cleaner. It's their job. It's their life goal to live in this planet, to do that, simply to do that. And how, how can we just not understand that and, and smash them and kill them. And plus we are giant to them. It is their hum it's not human nature, okay? But it's their nature to do that since the past billion years, since the earth start to form with all these fungi, all these like different type of insect, bacteria, is their job to here to clean it. Please respect. And if we don't respect it, so if we don't respect them to to please just start to understand okay instead of just like killing 
but I just start to understand it's so beautiful. The world is so beautiful. They're here to, they're, they're exist in here to remind me. When I see a flies, I understand that it's reminding me that, oh, I did not clean that enough, okay? And, and, and so that helped me to understand, ah, I, could, I should clean it more often, or I should clean this space uh, with more energy, right? So it helps me to understand what about poop in nature, right? In the forest, the wild pig, they do eat poop. And do you know dog, dog love poop, poop, poop. Dog see poop as like something like, like we seeing the, the best meal, uh, like the, the red baked, uh, you know, uh, pigs, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, like that kind of food, you know, like, like for dog it's delicious. You know, they don't see it as what we see. And if we are enforcing them to see what we're seeing and, 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 and don't let them enjoy their pleasure, we are enforcing and we are using our concept to inject it to other, other species uh, survival. So it's not a happy ending. Definitely not. Like skunk, they do eat it, right? And also fox, they do eat poop and wild bio rats they do eat poop and after they done so um so like the ground uh, rats will come and the beetles and uh, particular insects and ants flies they come to to decompose the poop and then after that is become smaller then the worms come in then the bacteria comes in and when it's become much more smaller it become a, a fungi it become the network underneath between between the tree and the and the mushrooms to send all these nutrient in between trees and the mushroom to make the tree grow better. The next year, if this is a pear tree, it will have a delicious pear for for human to enjoy. So that's how nature used to work. I mean, not used to, still working for the past a like, billion year, and and the whole entire process is all about celebration. Because think about when you are having a food celebration, just the same as, as these guys are happening underneath the ground. So I'm saying like when 2,500 years, when the Buddha find out, when he did meditation, when he find out all these life are celebrating underneath his feet, he's suddenly just aware that how harmful if we are just like put our feet and smash those community and stop them from celebrating their, you know, their, their nat natural, you know, the way that they naturally do. You know, they do dance as well, like not just bee dance, but like all these insects, they do have their own dance to celebrate their food after they finish eating it. Even the moment that they clean up their body, have you ever wa watch it? And if you don't watch it, you miss a lot of fun. You, you know, it's, it's a lot, of, it's a different kinds of survival. It will open up your minds because the way they did it uh, is so different from human being. And if we are willing to learn from them, I'm sure there's a lot of creative activities that are coming up for all life to enjoy. Okay, so that's why it's the moment that Buddha start to become bare feet uh, in, 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 in the forest because he recognized that all these lives are celebrating underneath his feet and turning all these like nutrient passing from tree to tree disregarding their species. 80% of these like roofed networks is all about collaboration. Only 20% is about competition and competition is not a bad competition. It's like good competition as well. It's like no, no, um, you know, it's amazing to learn from nature, to collaborate. That's why I'm sharing this experience. Let's talk about the emotion that related to climate change. This is the fifth element. The woman that you're seeing right here, she's dancing and she's representing the earth. So you see her, she putting her hands out, the nails out. Does it remind you some of the lady really like to do makeup, really like to look at their, their outfits? So all these things that like after that uh, song, people interview her and ask her like, what do you think about the planets was thinking when, when you think, when, when you're, you know, uh, showing, performing this song. She said, she think the planet is sad. Because why? Because like people only focusing on their external 
good and forgot to embrace their internal and forgot to, to, to not being dragged by emotion. So that emotions, um, if a lot of the time when a person get angry or so easy to get angry, the anger emotion controlled that person and that person would lost tem would lost patience, right? So that when, when there's um, climate change or extreme weather or flooding uh, occur in that person's life, you think that person can will be able to handle it without accepting his um, emotion or being controlled by his, his uh, her or his emotion. So, so just aware that, right? Just aware what kind of emotions that, that come to your way and and, and is it from outside or inside? Um, like, how can you, you know, like calm down yourself first and understanding it and then start to, you know, find way to heal your emotion, like to, to cooperate with your emotion, to work with your emotion, right? It is, it is a process of healing. Once you recognize that and, and the same thing as climate change, right? Your, now you know single-use plastic wraps is directly linked to climate change. So how would you act in your daily life to reduce the un, unnecessary need of single-use plastic wraps, right? And how can you deal with that? Sometimes I find out uh, the community that I live, it has a lot of people from Middle East and, and the store that they open a lot of the time is without packages. So I can simply bring my own container and go to the store and refill it. So understanding where you are, maybe it will help you to ease your emotion and work with climate change and, and, and you know, not being controlled by climate change, but also understanding what you can do step-by-step step in daily life to, to reduce the impact of climate change. Yes, so you're doing what you can. So there's nothing you, you, you need to be uh, uh, fear about, right? So in the long-term fulfillment, after we understand how nature works, and if we're willing to cooperate with nature, we're noticing the long-term goal is to help each other. The short-term goals is run by your desire, which is so easy. In this planet, it's so easy for a human being to make a judgment to another human being without a second thought. So easy to take out the person who asked the question instead of dealing with the question. So easy. But that is short term. And not just that. What's the consequence of short term is to ruining all lives. And we're already seeing it is happening because you so wanted that candy wrap that even just one time you so wanted it. And, and yes, you got that candy, but then in long term, you losing a chance to heal the planet because that may, may cause a seabird die. And that seabird's not coming back, that, di that bio biodiversity in this planet is not coming back. Then what happened? Then it will be more extreme weather and, and extreme, you know, like flood that we all live is suffering. So when you understand that connection, you will also understand what's your option. You have option to choose candy that is not wrapped in plastic wraps or candy that is made from stores that you can buy and put it in your own containers. So you understand there are options there, right? So there's four hour reduce, reuse, refresh, renovation. So these kind of uh, rethinks and we designed, it, it's gonna help to increase your physical health, mental health and your spiritual health in the long run. Because now and day you understand how the consequence if we run by desire. And what's the consequence if we help each other's? So make your own choice. Now, uh, let me share my own choice. When I use to toothbrush, I use the biodegradable toothbrush, which is I make from um, bamboo. And, and, the, and the brush is made from vegetable oil. 
and it can also be made from、uh, horse tails, and it can also make from willow willow trees leaves or willow tree stems. Reusable bags, reusable container, reusable jar, reusable mugs, reusable bottles, reusable in utensil and napkins. Right, your own natural soap. So when you have to clean your house, how how can I achieve that two months zero waste goal? I use a、uh, solid soap, right? When I purchase this solid soap, I make sure they have no plastic package come with, and. I also use,、um, you know,、uh, eco enzyme that I make from leftover fruit and vegetable and brown sugar and water. So that is that's how I achieve my two months zero waste, right? And also once a month, the woman will have periods. So I use hundred percent organic cotton. That is,、uh, that is like a hundred percent natural. And so I reuse the pad again and again. It may not; some of the women may not like it,、uh, but it's actually nurturing the whole entire planet. You know, your blood naturally floods, and it's actually healing, healing the soil, and make the soil soften. So it's really important to aware that nurturing, ah,、uh, from naturally from woman blood is same thing, nurturing. From natural flooding, so, right? Long time. There's a flooding in Egypt. There's flooding in China. There was flooding in in all over the world, and the flooding was so natural that flooding it needs to bring in all this like soft soil to enhance lives to grow much more diverse plants back then in Europe. I mean in Europe and also in Egypt before the dam was being built. So just understanding that, just aware that the nature is connected to human body, and so that helped me to achieve my two、uh, two months zero waste goal. And here's the nine reason why we need more nature, right? We need more nature to have good human health and well being, to good for our heart. If we walk for thirty minutes a day, only thirty minutes a day. Uh, at least thirty minutes a day, it will help our whole entire body blood flow and also enough oxygens for for us to to bring in the energy and also the amount of sunlight that you observe during that time. It help you to sleep better at night. Capture the carbon and lock it away. Connect to the nature, because when you're going to nature. You don't use the a computer, so you actually reduce the amount of CO two that you are you are producing. Virtual and clean air and water. When you connect to nature, your whole entire breathing is different. So try to observe your breathing when you go hiking. It's different, and it's much more fresh air. And so it's crucial for health food, healthy foods. So when you are connected to nature. You wanted to start with community garden because New York City has a lot of community garden, where you can actually start to plant foods, right? Essential for wildlife and plants to thrive. Again, biodiversity in the nature is also、uh, when when you embrace that, you're also embracing your own biodiversity inside of your guts, and if. The, How a person become more healthy is because you have a lot of diversity bacteria in your gut, so that you are healthy. Your immunity is strong because of that. So you can, you know,、um, check yourself. Maybe just try for five days. That five days, you start to eat local. And and seasonal, and try to limit as much as pesticide and herbicide food as much as you can. Just do that for even just one day, and then you observe your entire body. It will amaze you. Okay, it will amaze you. Just like I'm purchasing the rice from New Jersey, which is much much more closer to to where I live, and it, it there's a difference, right? Uh, after you eat that rice, so 
just understanding that and start um, making choices that close to, um, you know, um, more diversity and build up your diversity inside of your gut. It will, once you're more healthy, you don't need to, you know, go to see doctor and those doctors don't need to get money depending on cancer, right? Depending on more, more people getting cancer, that's not okay at all. So going back to nature also prevent flood and soil erosion, right? And um, also fills us with a aha moment and wonder. When you go to nature, our legacy for the children and for of today and tomorrow. When you go to nature, it you start to understand how to repair the damage we have caused, and by using less plastic. So here is uh, nine ways you can reduce the ocean plastic. Just like I said before, you can clean your whole entire house with uh, coconut oil and vinegar and baking soda. And you can use, make your own toothpaste by putting third part of, of coconut oil, mixed it with uh, two parts of baking soda. So that mm. helps a lot. And that's like a long way to, to go because it saves you up a lot of money. And it also helps to, help to clean up your home much more natural way to do that, you know, like this. Uh, and consider sharing, hiring, or, or, you know, exchanging, right? Exchanging instead of owning, right? Or maybe secondhand, purchase secondhand instead of buying new. So I try to go to Craigslist. There's a lot of stuff there, or maybe Best Buy, they do sell secondhand stuff and it's much more than enough. Buy high quality item that can last for long. And also um, think about reuse, reuse your own materials. Definitely not use any single use plastic, you're saving the ocean. And to inspire others, right? Mm -hmm. So why do we, you know, refuse to use single use uh, plastic? There's nine reasons in here. It kills marine lives, lives and birds. It enter in our food chain, pollute the ocean, cause the hormone disruption, and even cause like, and cancer. And even that it will change the hormone for, for puberty. And it makes uh, some of the kids uh, become much more early, early mature. So that's not good. That's why you, if you see some of the kids that look like they're like a pump up balloon, understand that their food diet or maybe uh, their diet has, has, has like uh, used too much plastic. Leeches toxic into the food and drain, right? So that's why we stop using single use plastic. It's important. And only a tiny percentage is recycled and it's made from fossil fuels. And it's a huge uh, footprint by, by using that uh, single-use plastic. And it will still be here in thousands of years. So what can you do? Well, to protect lives, you can start to use reusable um, you know, mask and also the Omicron can stay on plastic the longest, which is 193.5 hours, which is equal to 8.15 days. So just aware that you have to, if you have to use them, you make sure that you, you, you cut the branches so that it doesn't digest by sea turtle or doesn't trap any bird's legs. And to reduce it, try to use reusable mask. Or maybe like have you, if you have to throw that mess away, make sure you have to special treat it. Uh, you know, the, the mask, like cut the bandage and take out the, 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 the metal stripes, right? Uh, the metal stings. And then, um, and then like, um, yeah, just like leave it. And you know what, after eight days, if there's, if there's uh, if the bacteria is not getting into human body, the bacteria will disappear. So if you consider we use your mask, maybe you can wait until after eight days 
right? It can only survive for eight days. So that means after eight days, uh, it will disappear, okay? And so and so I have a map for the whole entire planet. This is called a fruit tree map. It's called a fallingfruit.org. So from this map, if you wanted to foraging for natural food, fruits, vegetable, that is near around your home, you can definitely click in this link and find out what are the fruits that are available in near around your home. Right, so you can see it. Europe's United States, Australia, uh, South Africa, Africa. Those are the places that you can find um, the foraging, right? You can foraging from there. So this map is like uh, the amount of CO2 that's actually dropped at the beginning of the pandemic. The reason is because like during that time, no one is like taking the airplane. No one is like driving. So during that time it's dropped. So our human behavior is definitely able to make a change for the whole entire planet. It's connected to climate change. And if we do it consciously, we may be able to save the planet. Because like each tons of waste that we generated, 71 tons of industrial waste were, were, are generated before the product gets to you. So understanding that choice, understanding when you pick up that, that uh, material and understanding how much waste is already created before it reached to you. And what do we want to leave behind? Microplastic or a simple um, marks just like the birds, the turtle, the crabs make on sand. Right? What kind of mark do we want to leave? And take a look at the trash that were being made 100 years ago in 1930. It was just like few dots, right? Few dots that mean like those dots are, were are open trash sites. What about in 2013? Wow. The trash is already filling up the whole entire United States and maybe some other country like Canada, right? Or some other country like China. Places like this are also accumulating trash, right? In, in terms of accumulating trash, the whole entire planets are suffering the same, okay? Disregarding, you know, um, anything that is happening. But accumulating trash is a fact. Okay, it's not from a person's belief. It's the fact that's accumulating, all lives are accumulating, okay, including human bodies, to be honest. So there's no way to deal with it. Why can we reduce it? You see how important to reduce it now? So um, we, we continue to share, I'm gonna continue to share the screen. Let's share about the solutions. Let's share about the solution. Right, you are aware, let's, let's come into awareness. You can recycle your batteries to Best Buy, to um, Best Buy and to Ikea. They do recycle batteries and stables, but you have to, for stable, you have to talk to the person inside to make sure you get the right place to go. For Whole Food, they are no longer recycle plastic bags, but you can go to Lowe's. They do recycle plastic bag, Target. Uh, Rite A also no longer, uh, no longer receive plastic bag because since the pandemic, since the beginning of pandemic, super fresh supermarket, they do recycle uh, plastic bag, but plastic bag can only recycle once. After that, it's still trash. So just aware that like even plastic bottles, hard plastic, it can only be recycled four times. Used to be saying that seven times, but now it's, um, the data change is into four times, right? Including all these like chemical plastic bottles. So reduce your use of plastic is becomes the key to, 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 to your solutions, right? And how can I reduce the two months trash? 
I walk more, right? And for my electricity, I choose 100% solar and wind. Even though solar and wind, it has battery problem that cause, uh, uh, you know, radiation and pollution in the soil, but it, it is a better choice that it can lead, ease, ease the climate, um, you know, change uh, pressure for now. So that's why I choose it. But for long term, I'm thinking about anaerobic digestion system, which means the input is just level food and the output will, will, will become that material can also go back to soil to nurture the soil. So that's like the, a lot of like uh, great thing is happening or maybe you can ride your bike at home and that can charge your phone. Right, so there's so many different ways to make um, energy, or maybe you can use water to make energy from the top of the building down to the bottom, and that make the wheel turn, and so that would you know allow allow to create power. Right, so many creative way, but it's it has to have those attention uh, or intention bring into this this uh, kind of uh, innovation to help to save the planet. So I don't, there's, um, there's 10 tips I, I share on YouTube that uh, shows that how to not open AC. And you can check that out later. But then um, that like close to my zero waste goals is, um, yeah, uh, is, to, is to use the window. So if you have window from Southwest left, uh, you know, right or, maybe the north, south, you can definitely use those windows to drag the air into your house to reduce the impact of this planet. Um, what else? I think I said it pretty much, uh, reduce, reduce shopping online. And if you have to shop online, um, you know, uh, just like make sure the 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 person who offering this is is it doesn't like contain uh toxic uh packagings you know like plastic wrap cap packaging but for Amazon is unavoidable I think I realized that so it's important um to shop like if you live in Brooklyn it's perfect there's a company called Upcycle that they actually ship uh the I mean they they also ride bicycle and they ride bicycle and they bring you the snacks and the food that you bought from Upcycle. And then after you use it, you can bring all this like food uh, and container into a, a bag that they provided to you and then they will pick it up or maybe help you to wash it. So that in that case, you, pre you provide, uh, you create zero waste. So, I also noticing Canada also uh, have opening this kind of zero waste stores. So it's possible that you can uh, be zero waste, but it has to has like a whole entire community to do it together. And I, now I see more and more people to do it together. So it's, uh, it's very helpful and hopeful um, direction that we're heading to. So shop local, okay, shop local. And think twice before you make that products, before you choose that product. I'm sure we have made mistakes, but start from now on, just be conscious before you take an action, before you take that hands, you know, before you pick up that product. So like I said, what about level foods, right? You can donate it to a senior center, share to homeless, give it to animals, chips, pigs, right? Chickens, make dumplings, cookies, breads, uh, you know, um, make jams and jelly and mix eco enzyme and compost. So compost is important, just like we are making salad for the earth. So that when the insect eat them, it's just like they're eating, they're changing the carbon, the nitrogens into nitrogen. And that nitrogen nurture the ground and it, 
and it helps, you know, you see they're celebrating. When they poop, they eat, they dance, just like human being, and they're celebrating. And all this poop is turned into nutrient to help the flower to grow again. So eco M sign is the right hand side. They did a, the scientist is named uh, Rashus, uh, Rashuski. She's a scientist and she's a doctor. She, it took her 30 years to find out this ratio. So be, be, be appreciated. Like I'm very appreciated and I'm very, um, like when I'm using it and I'm really appreciated. So use that um, when you mix it with oil and water and dishwashers with the eco enzyme, that's the results. You're cleaning the entire bottles. So I use eco enzyme detergent instead of the ordinary detergent. And it helps to clean the water. And if you go to their website, uh, I remember there was one sentence saying that when you look at the, up to the white cloud, you know you have something to do with it because you make eco enzyme. And when it's uh, evaporated into the sky, it turns into white cloud instead of black cloud. When you look at the black cloud in the sky, you are aware that it's contained heavy metal. So just aware that your contribution can turn into cloud as well. Cloud is not just an illusion, right? It's part of the system. I mean, not system. I don't like to use the system which related to industrial. It's a part of the cycle, right? It's part of the life cycle. The cloud is also part of the life cycles. Just aware of that. So one part of eco enzyme, 1000 part of water, you can use that to wash the vegetable for 15 to 45 minutes. Every time when I put that water, um, I, when I mix that water, then I add the vegetable, it always tastes better. Biodiversity, not just important inside of your body and outside of your body. So when I, when I achieve my two months zero waste goal, I try to shop in a local farmer market and talk to those farmers directly to understand where my food is actually coming from. So just like your stomach, you want it to breathe and you want it to breathe really well in 360 direction. Same thing as the planet, it will have much more observation when the, when the soil is not blocked by concrete. And how's that effect? Uh, when the rainwater comes down, the water will fastly run away from the root now, 7% of the sea level rise is caused by roads and highway because of that, the way that we build it without the natural filtration and the natural observation that uh, observe, observe, yeah, observation. So uh, in, instead of having a wetland or underground water, now we have concretes and all the water fastly run away and it's caused the flooding. So the flooding is 7% of the flooding and the, and the rain. sea level rise is contributed by roads, the way that we build roads and highway. That's still a lot, even though it sounds like 7%, but when it can, can you know, consider the whole entire planet, that's a lot of water we can save. So uh, in terms of like diversity, uh, if there's more plant to grow in, in the area, the more possibility that a human can do foraging. And by doing foraging, it means that uh, we can have harvest much more natural and local seasonal uh, foods that is able to get into our stomach and help us to heal and fight with the increasing of our, our immunity. Do you ever know that dandelion is a medicine plant? You can eat the leaves, you can eat the roots and you can eat the flower. It helps to detoxify your body. Do you know that? So after you're noticing that, foraging become much more fun and meaningful to your body. And look at that. It's, it's only 40% of evaporation, right? But compared to the city, it's only 30% evaporation and 55% runoff compared to the uh, natural grounded where it allowed more plant to grow with grasses or, or, 
or people who said of wheat, but it's actually medicine plants, right? Wheat is just a European concept, that thing that is all wheat, but then it's actually a lot of medicine plants are growing in, in your neighborhood or when you walk down on the street, you don't even recognize that it can heal your body, uh, it can detoxify your body. So just aware that. That like 25 deep filtration into the water that can nurturing more lives, right? And 25% and shallow filtration compared to the 10% in, uh, in, in cities. And if we often see this happen on the street, it's accumulated a lot of bad bacteria. But if it is like filtration, it can direct all this water goes go down and being be filtered. And this water can accumulate it again. And after it being filtered, it may be able to use in a building again to for washing your hands, for flushing the toilets. So a uh, two months deal waste goal is really a long-term goal is that you start to understanding how our lifestyle is damaging the whole entire system, including our body, and make that connection to outside of our bodies to make the change that turn it into a long-term goals for both of your lives and, and your survival's needs. So, and... And so and so um, to limiting that impact, I, I have now and then I have part of the energy that I observe, um, you know, uh, even though I'm renting a, a place, I'm not owning anything, but then I'm able to switch my energy needs uh, in, instead of like requiring from fossil fuel or natural gas. Now I have my uh, pack of my energy from solar panel. So solar panel that is like also local, local, local and, 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 and it's short distance. But then like when you look at the air conditioning, um, you know, it's also release uh, HCOCL, uh, that air can, can harm the ozone layer. But to heal the ozone layer, you can make uh, eco enzymes or you can also like think of different way to make the air conditioning, like plastic bottle we use, right? We use, we design. So that's another way. And so like foods, right? Foods is so important. And have you ever think about to plant foods uh, in someone else's rooftop? Maybe you can, maybe you wanted to start to look around and see if your neighbor who whoever has a empty vacant lots or maybe like a front yard, back yard that they don't really taken care of. Maybe you can start reaching out to those people and see if they want, they allow you to, you know, uh, plant something or turn it into a food garden. So it'd be really amazing that you can start planting in your, in community garden or maybe in neighbor, neighbor's um, gardens. So just open-minded and keep that options up. To, to reach your um, zero waste goal. Same thing as energy. The best thing to, to do it uh, with like the energy is to start to, you know, renovate your own, like riding a bike to, to make the smoothies, right? So that, that case is much more fun and you did, did exercise at home and also you make the smoothie. You have the smoothie. <laughs> Or you can start consider uh, like I, me myself, I buy my own biogas um, machine, and you can install it in your backyard, where you can use the level fruit and vegetable and turn that gas to cooking, for cooking. So it's called anaerobic digestion system. It's like a little dragons put out the fire, right from his stomachs. It's put out the fire. It's making that gas, the methane gas and use that gas to cook instead of just release them in the air. A uh, rocket stove or uh, solar, solar um, dish that actually focusing, refocus the sunlight and turn that energy into cooking without using any gas. So there's so many ways to cook uh, all these ways Right, these are uh, like the rocket stove is what it was banned because 
it was banned because um, people think that oh that that's like fire that's dangerous uh, and then like it released the smoke that's like not good for the air but do you know the soil actually need those like burning and sometimes if it's like too wet in that location it also need those fire to even out and to balance the microclimates in that area in order to balance it out. So the fire is necessary to, to make uh, like as a human behavior. And that fire, after that fire being made, the charcoal, the active charcoal can actually turn into a really great thing to wash your body, right? To wash stuff and to, to, to make your mask, right? Or your face facial, it's really good. And even like brush your teeth to whiten your teeth. Like all this active charcoal is gold. So don't let that, you know, like, but like the city roots is telling you like, don't do that, right? But then it's, it's limiting your, you know, I don't want to say your freedom, but it's, it is it is eliminating that possibilities, right? right? That possibilities of turning something into something else to nurture the ground and nurture the lives. So you can also like be creative by reusing all this plastic straw and candle, uh, you know, uh, cover, I mean like light cover to turn that into plants, to grow plants. So the reason why to grow this ty type of plants uh, you can actually allow the roof to grow deeper without watering the plants. So if you're lazy, you're too busy, two months without watering the plant, the plants still grow because of this way of design. I have the water underneath and the stone underneath and then the soil underneath and, and the air can go through. And then, the, and then it's, uh, having the plants can keep it alive right, without even watering it. Or maybe you can turn the leaves into bookmarks instead of throwing it away. So those are like the two months zero waste go uh, tips, right? You can take. So compost, right? We talk about blue spur flower. This is how it looks. And in Taiwan, this guy, he used this compost toilet and the liquid can flow out into um, mix it with the water and flow out to nurture the banana plants outside of the, uh, of the, of the compost toilet. So that's even better. And so um, it's really important to deal with the foods, like to understand how we can make closer connection with our food. So here it come um, planting native plants. So when you're planting native plants, you make sure you plant diverse, right? Some flower, brushes, grasses, right? All kinds. And if the soil start to grow stuff that you don't uh, recognize, you can let them grow. When they grow into a certain height, you can cut them and let them become compost to nurture the soil. Because those uh, plants, they grow fast this regarding uh, their local or not, but they help to drag out the heavy metal in the soil. So there's a need for, that's why there's a need for those plants to grow. Tiny forest is a tiny local native forest. It's an experiment that um, uh, start from a Japanese and, and then he, a uh, Japanese engineer that he worked for car, uh, car business. And then this person is follow him and then st also start to design a native uh, tiny gardens. And also like um, to reach this two months your waste goal, you definitely wanted to um, keep the plastic material with you until there's a safe way to uh, you know, discard them in, um, not in nature, but like to, to put them in a way that it can net, uh, it can like, it can be safely traded. Because now if you 
change your mindset, you understand that like the single use plastic is not disposable. It's supposed to be claimed as, as disastrous waste, hazardous waste. So when you look at them, I, I, I no longer look at plastic bags the same way as I do. I see that as a hazardous waste that need to be treated carefully. Otherwise it kills a lot of lives. So without the right way to trade with it, like super fresh, they do recycle it, even though it's once time, but at least I know a thing they're doing it. So I would bring it to them, right? So without knowing how um, there's a right place to deal with it, I, I, was, I would suggest to just store it for now. Or we design the material without use of plastic, like these. These are from, okay, so yeah. Or we design your whole entire home. But that's a long project, you know, but it's not saying that it's impossible. Okay. My 90 year old aunt had great teeth to the very end and she used baking soda. Um, she said it neutralized the acid in your mouth that eats the enamel and it also cleans the teeth. So it apparently does work. Well, can you say that again? Sure. Did you hear that? Um, the thing says mute. Yeah. Should I unmute it? No, you're not muted. Yeah. Yeah, same. Okay, so my 90 year old aunt had great teeth even when she was close to 100 years old. And she always used baking soda on her teeth. And she said it um, neutralized the acid that eats the enamel as well as cleaning the teeth. And, oh. um, and the acid causes the cavities from the bacteria. Right. She yeah. was into natural, we don't know how she. She was the only one in the family um, into a natural lifestyle way before it was trendy to do so. We don't know where she got it from, but it, it did work. It but works. it's a common knowledge because I, I met um, a carbon tree that she's like uh, 70 something years old. And she said when she was little, this is like a common way to deal with it. Just like vinegar and baking soda to clean everything. That's why like in her project, she was introduced by a big company that using a lot of toxic chemical, but in her house in Hawaii, she choose to stay the same using vinegar and, and baking soda, nothing else. Mm. That's all you need basically, right? I mean, in most cases. Yeah. 